In this next segment, we'll be talking about the pathophysiology and treatment of hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is the most common type of thyroid disorder. As you can see, there are different places within the thyroid hormone system that things can go wrong and cause hypothyroidism. The first type of hypothyroidism is primary hypothyroidism or thyroid gland failure. There are a couple different types within this subcategory, the first being Hashimoto's. This is an antibody-mediated type of hypothyroidism. Iatrogenic, um, and this is following surgical resection or radioactive iodine, where we essentially induce hypothyroidism. It can also be drug-induced. Drugs like thioamides, lithium, and amiodarone can cause this. Secondary hypothyroidism is caused by pituitary failure. This is much less common than primary hypothyroidism. The last kind of hypothyroidism is hypothalamus failure or tertiary hypothyroidism. This happens when there's insufficient hypothalamic hormones available. You probably remember this image from the thyroid pathophysiology overview. You can see that there are a few different places that we just discussed that hypothyroidism can go wrong, including the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, and the thyroid gland. You'll also see that within the thyroid gland, the body depends on iodine in order to make T3 and T4. Worldwide, iodine deficiency is a leading cause of hypothyroidism. This is why you commonly see iodized salts and this is a form of mass iodine supplementation to avoid hypothyroidism in the masses. It's also possible for, the, for antibodies to block TSH receptors on the thyroid cells, therefore blocking T4 and T3 released from the thyroid gland. And this would be something that you would see in a condition like Hashimoto's. Patients with hypothyroidism will present with somewhat nonspecific symptoms more so than hyperthyroidism. These patients may present with dry, coarse, cold skin, coarse hair, periorbital puffiness, which you'll see in the photo over to the right. They may have cold intolerance, weight gain, constipation, weakness, fatigue, loss of ambition and depression, a goiter, or bradycardia. You probably remembered this slide from the previous video, A Thyroid Overview. In patients who present with symptoms of hypothyroidism, you may be testing a TSH level in these patients. Furthermore, you may go on to test a T3 or T4 level. In patients with hypothyroidism, as you probably remember, we expect them to have an elevated TSH level due to the body's attempt to upregulate the thyroid hormone system as well as having a decrease in a level of T3 and T4 hormone levels. Once you've established that your patient has hypothyroidism, there are many different treatment options to choose from. The preferred option is the synthetic formulation levothyroxine. This is a T4 form of hormone supplementation. It's chemically stable, inexpensive, free of antigenicity, and has uniform potency. Most people's bodies are able to convert the T4 to the active T3 hormone, and that's why this formulation is preferred. Another option that patients could choose if they're looking for a more natural form of thyroid supplementation is the desiccated thyroid or thyroid USP formulations. This medication has both T4 and T3 hormones within it, but the ratio of the two is variable, which can make it hard to dose. The animal protein formulation can also be antigenic. Uh, this is dosed starting at 15 to 30 milligrams per day, and you can increase by 15 milligram increments every two to four weeks. There are other formulations of thyroid supplementation as well that you may choose to use depending on your patient's situation. Lyothyronine is the T3 form of the thyroid hormone. This is dosed in 25 micrograms per day, and you can increase 
12.5 to 25 micrograms per day every one to two weeks. The T3 formulation is the active form of the thyroid in the body, and the upside of that it is that it's the active form and is released very quickly, so it doesn't take long to take effect. The downside is that it has a very short half-life, so it has to be dosed multiple times a day. Most patients will not need this active T3 form of thyroid hormone because our body is able to convert T4 to T3 when it's needed. Liotrix is a T3 and T4 supplementation, and it's in a 4 to 1 ratio. This is dose 30 milligrams per day, and you increase by 15 milligrams per day every 2 to 3 weeks. Again, we don't normally need to use this in patients because our body is able to convert T4 to T3 when we need it. Levothyroxine, like I stated previously, is the thyroid supplementation that is preferred in our patients with hypothyroidism. The initial dosing will depend on whether or not the patient is older or younger and whether or not they have cardiovascular risk at baseline. Um, young patients, which we would consider healthy adults less than 15, 50 years of age, and children who grow, who, in whom growth and puberty are complete, can be dosed at 1.7 micrograms per kilogram daily. Patients who are 50 years or older or with known cardiovascular risk factors you would want to start at 25 micrograms a day. These patients, you can titrate the dose about every six weeks, and you would, um, you would increase the dose or decrease the dose to the next available strength that's available. The usual maintenance dose for most patients ends up being around 110 to 100 micrograms daily. There is an IV formulation of levothyroxine, and that's half of the oral dose. Some possible adverse effects of levothyroxine are hypotension, palpitations, and anxiety, nausea, vomiting, and weight loss, and decreased bone mineral density. You'll see that these adverse effects really correlate with symptoms that we'll talk about in the hyperthyroidism lecture, and this may mean that your patients would need a dose adjustment. Available strength of levothyroxines come in 25, 50, 75, 88, 100, 112, 125, 137, 150, 175, 200, and 300 microgram tablets. You can really use any combination of these as well. The 50 microgram tablet is the only strength without artificial dyes added, so just keep that in mind for patients who have allergies or intolerances to dyes. There are some important clinical pearls to note about levothyroxine and thyroid supplementation in order for our patients to have an effective and safe treatment. It's important to know that patients may need to decrease their thyroid supplementation dose as age increases. This is because they can become more sensitive to the medication as they age. Another important note is that different generic brands may vary in potency with regards to levothyroxine. Levothyroxine is a narrow therapeutic index drug in the state of North Carolina. This means that any tiny differences in formulations or dose can have a large impact on their um, levothyroxine levels in the body. Changes between brand and generic or different generic manufacturers are not allowed unless the prescriber is notified in the state of North Carolina. If you receive this notification from the pharmacy, it's important to let the patient to educate the patient on signs and symptoms of hyper and hypothyroidism so they may be able to know if they've got major changes going on in their body and they also may need to come in for more frequent lab monitoring as they're getting adjusted on the new manufacturer just to make sure that there are no major changes for them. With regards to taking levothyroxine, they have to administer the medication on an empty stomach 30 minutes before breakfast. This will make the absorption of the medication um, more consistent on a day-to-day -day basis. They also must separate it from any sort of multivitamins, antacids, iron supplements, 
really anything that contains vitamins and minerals. For monitoring with levothyroxine, you'll want to get a TSH and a T4 level every six weeks until you thyroid, then every six months for one year, then yearly from thereafter. You'll also want to monitor heart rate and blood pressure as these can be signs or symptoms that the patient's thyroid levels are off. Next, we'll just run through some review questions to make sure we drive home the important points about hypothyroidism and its treatment. First, what are important counseling points when starting levothyroxine? Some of the major counseling points are that patients should administer it on an empty stomach because it's better absorbed that way. There are many drug interactions with levothyroxine, so they'll want to separate the medication from any sort of multivitamin and any medication containing magnesium, calcium, iron, or aluminum. This medication should be taken in the morning, both due to the empty stomach and because it stimulates the metabolism. This could cause restlessness if it's taken at night. When thinking about hypothyroidism, there are some points to ponder. Subclinical hypothyroidism is when there are low thyroid hormone levels but no signs or symptoms. If this is the case with your patient, you may consider starting 25 micrograms of levothyroxine and seeing how the patient tolerates it. There's also a syndrome called myxedemic coma. Um, and this is a severe case of hypothyroidism. This can result in loss of consciousness, hypothermia, seizures, and other hypothyroid syndromes. The treatment of this is IV levothyroxine. In this case, we want to make sure that we bolus the patient with 500 micrograms and then give them five, five, excuse me, 50 to 100 micrograms per day in the IV formulation. These patients also need intravenous lyothyronine, that immediate acting T3 formulation, and this is dosed 25 to 50 micrograms once daily. Next, we'll visit a couple cases. A 62-year-old white female comes to your primary care clinic for a semi-annual checkup. While interviewing the patient, you discover that she takes her levothyroxine 88 micrograms daily after eating breakfast when she takes all of her other medications. Her TSH level comes back today at 2.4. What recommendations do you have for the patient? In this case, because the patient's TSH level comes back in the therapeutic range, we really don't want to do anything with this patient. Usually, if the patient isn't taking the medication appropriately and it's impacting their TSH level, we'd want to counsel on things like administration techniques. But in this case, it's more important for our patient to be consistent with the way that she's taking her levothyroxine, which should result in consistent TSH levels. In this case, I would educate the patient on, to, on taking her levothyroxine consistently every single day. Our next patient is a 62-year-old white female who comes to the primary care clinic for a semi-annual checkup. While interviewing the patient, you discover that she takes her levothyroxine 88 micrograms daily after eating breakfast when she takes all of her other medications. Her TSH level comes back today at 5.6. What recommendations do you have? In this case, because the patient's TSH level is coming back high, we know that the patient is not getting enough levothyroxine or her thyroid levels are too low in the body. Simply taking the, her levothyroxine on an empty stomach may be sufficient for her because her TSH level was only slightly higher than it should be. However, if that's not feasible for our patient, then we may want to increase her dose to 100 micrograms daily, which is the next tablet strength up.
the last case is a repeat that we've of the patient that we've seen in the previous two case, cases. This patient TSH level comes back today at 0.24. What recommendations do you have for her today? In this case, because the TSH level came back too low, we know that her levothyroxine levels or thyroid hormone levels in the body are actually too high. This means that the patient is being overtreated and will need a dose decrease to 75 micrograms daily. If she also adjusts the timing of administration, she may need even further dose reduction.